This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and today is Monday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. Today, we're going to take a look at Black Legendary Creatures. This is the third MTG Top 10 I've done, looking at legendary creatures with a mono-colored identity. Early in the year, I looked at both red and white creatures, and like in those videos, my methodology for ranking the cards is a little bit different than usual, as I want to give some credit to cards that are good in Commander. I don't normally include any sort of metric about Commander in my top 10s, as the goal of these videos is to look at the competitive history of Magic 60 card constructive formats, but when we're talking about legendary creatures, it seems like it would be a big mistake to leave out Commander, the format where they're the most important. So, in addition to the usual points, which are gained from top 8s at tier 1 and tier 2 events, each card in this video is also given 1 point for every 100 decks on EDH rec that use that card as a Commander. To be eligible for this list, a card had to be a legendary creature with a mono-black identity, in all, there were 173 cards eligible for this list, and in this video, we'll take a look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on Magic's 60 card constructed formats and EDH. All right, let's take a look now at Magic's top 10 legendary black creatures. At number 10, it is Ayara, first of Lockthwain. She's a 2-3 that costs 3 black mana, and whenever she or another black creature enters the battlefield, you drain your opponent one life. You can also tap her and sacrifice another black creature to draw a card. Obviously, Ayara really wants to be played in a mono-black deck where she's the easiest to cast and where you can take the most advantage of her abilities. She saw a bit of play in standard mono-black aggro decks, but she gets on this list mostly as a result of being a heavily played commander, appearing as the commander in more than 3,100 decks on EDA Trek. She makes for a pretty great commander for mono-black, as she, obviously, synergizes with all the other black creatures in the game. She also overlaps into life gain and sacrifice strategies, two common themes for black decks. At number 9, it is Erebos, God of the Dead. This 4-mana 5-7 Theros God comes with indestructibility, keeps your opponents from gaining life, and you can pay mana and life to draw cards. Of course, like the other Theros Gods, you do have to do some work for it to actually be a creature. It's just an enchantment until you get your Devotion to Black to 5. While there were lots of Devotion decks in Theros Standard, Black was arguably the most powerful of the bunch, thanks to cards like Erebos and Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which hugely incentivized you playing cards with lots of Black mana symbols. Erebos was also played in some less Devotion-centric control decks while it was in Standard, but it hasn't gained any points since Rotation, and it doesn't even seem to be seeing fringe play in Pioneer, so it isn't super likely to gain more points in 60 card formats, but it is a fairly popular mono-black commander. As with Ayara, you don't have to go too hard on Synergy to make Erebos work, just play a bunch of black cards. And number 8 it is Gaunti, Lord of Luxury. When this 4-mana 2-3 with Death Touch enters the battlefield, you look at the top 4 cards of your opponent's library and exile one of them face down. You can cast that card for as long as it remains exiled and can spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. Importantly, this effect continues even if Gaunti dies, and because Gaunti himself has Death Touch, that means it's pretty difficult for your opponent to ever do better than getting 2 for 1. When it comes to 60 card formats, almost all of Gaunti's points came in Standard, where he saw heavy play as a result of the impressive value he could deliver. He was especially good in mid-range and control decks. He's also a reasonably popular mono-black commander, appearing as the commander in more than 1,000 decks on EDH rec. These decks usually focus on finding ways to blink Gaunti, so you can keep stealing cards from your opponent. At number 7, it is Turgrid, God of Fright. She's a 5-mana 4-5 with Menace, and whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent, you put that card from the graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Like all Kaldheim gods, she is a modal double-faced card, so you can also choose to cast her as Turgrid's Lantern, a 4-mana artifact that you can tap to make an opponent lose 3 life, unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. You can also pay 3 generic and a black to untap the Lantern. Most of Turgrid's power comes from the front side, which gives you a big reward for doing two things that Black loves to do anyway. This makes all of your edicts and discard spells truly absurd, as they effectively all become two-for-ones when you steal opposing permanents. She hasn't seen much play in 60-card formats, with only a couple of points coming from standard Demir control decks. However, she's the third most popular mono-black commander, appearing in over 6,000 decks on EDH rec. If you're planning on making people discard or sacrifice permanents, there really isn't a better option out there. At number 6, it's Marrow Gnawer. This 5-mana 2-3 gives all rats, including itself, fear, and you can tap it and sacrifice a rat to make X 1-1 rat creature tokens, where X is the number of rats you control. 
Obviously, this makes him great whether or not you have a bunch of other rats around, as the ability will become exponentially more powerful, and things can get really crazy if you have a bunch of rats. This is the first of two cards on the list that don't have any points at all, as a result of Constructed. In other words, Mero Nar got here entirely because he's heavily played in Commander. He's the second most popular monoblack commander in the game, and the 69th most popular commander overall. Unsurprisingly, he's played as the commander for decks that are loaded up with rats, as giving them all fear and making a bunch of tokens is a great way to overwhelm your opponents. At number 5, it is Yawgmoth Thran Physician. This 4-mana 2-4 has protection from humans, and you can pay 1 life and sacrifice another creature to put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on another creature and draw a card. You can also pay 2 black mana and discard a card to proliferate. When you first look at this, you probably think about using the life-paying ability to put the minus one, minus one counters on opposing creatures, and you can definitely do that, but Yawgmoth has gained the bulk of his points in 60-card constructed formats in decks that can pull off instant win combos by putting the counters on your own creatures. This is accomplished in modern toolbox decks, which seek to get Yawgmoth and two creatures with Undying into play, like Garolf's Messenger. Once you've done that, you sacrifice one of them to Yawgmoth's ability to put a minus one, minus one counter on something, and then the Undying creature returns with a plus one, plus one counter. Then, you use Yawgmoth's ability to put a minus one, minus one counter on that creature that has a plus one, plus one counter. This gets rid of that counter, so you can sacrifice it again, and it will come back. You then alternate between putting minus one, minus one counters and sacrificing those creatures to win the game. While this combo sounds a little convoluted, these modern Yawgmoth decks are toolbox decks, which mean they have lots of great ways to find combo pieces, most notably Court of Calling and Collected Company, so assembling this out of nowhere is quite doable. Yawgmoth is from Modern Horizons, which means the only 60-card formats he's legal in are Modern, Legacy, and Vintage, and so far he's only gained points in Modern, but he looks very well positioned to keep doing that. While he isn't quite as popular as Maronar or Turgrid, he does see significant play as a commander too. In that format, he isn't used as much for combos, but he does do a lot of things black decks often aim to do, like paying life, putting counters on things, proliferating, sacrificing things, and discarding cards. This makes finding nice synergy for Yawgmoth fairly easy to come by. At number 4, it is Kirik, son of Yawgmoth. So, we actually have Father and Son back to back. For 4 generic and 3 black Phyrexian mana, Kirik is a 2-2 with lifelink that allows you to pay 2 life for every black mana symbol in your costs. Anytime you cast a black spell, you also put a plus and plus 1 counter on Kirik, so casting a bunch of spells with him is quite easy, thanks to his own cost reduction effect, and because he has lifelink and gets bigger, he can make sure you have even more life to pay in the future. Cost reduction effects are always great, and this is one of the best ones out there. Like Maronar, Kirik hasn't seen any play in 60-card constructed formats. This is because he's from Commander 2019, meaning the only 60-card constructed formats he's legal in are Legacy and Vintage, and it can be pretty hard to be competitive in the game's most powerful formats. However, he makes up for that by being the most popular mono-black commander in Magic and the 36th most popular commander overall. This is a result of the fact that he is incredibly powerful and unique. There just isn't another legendary mono-black creature out there who does the same sort of thing as Kirik. All that said, it does seem likely that his dad is going to pass him in the near future, as he will continue to accumulate points in Modern, unlike Kirik, who relies entirely on Commander. At number 3, it is Gristlebrand. We just saw a card that got here entirely as a result of Commander, and now we have the opposite. This card gets here entirely as a result of 60-card formats. This is because Gristlebrand is banned in Commander, so there's no way for him to have any points from that format. But that's okay, he happens to be one of the most powerful creatures in the entire game, and that leads to him gaining points in every format he has ever been legal in. Gristlebrand is an 8-8 with flying and lifelink, and you can pay 7 life to draw 7 cards. Obviously, this means he can fuel himself, since he can gain you all that life. I don't mention the mana cost here of Gristlebrand because no one ever casts him. Instead, he's the premier creature to cheat into play in Modern, Legacy, and Vintage. This is accomplished in Modern with cards like Through the Breach. In Legacy and Vintage, you can do it with a bunch of reanimator spells or sneak attack or show and tell. And in Vintage, you can do it with Oath of Druids. The great thing about Gristlebrand is just getting him into play is often enough to win you the game because he can net you so many cards. Gristlebrand is going to keep on gaining points in 60-card constructed formats and has the potential to someday be the number one card on this list, despite being at a complete disadvantage when it comes to Commander. At number 2, it is Kalitas Traitor of Get. This 4-mana 3-4 with lifelink gives you a 2-2 zombie every time a non-token creature an opponent control dies, and that card also gets exiled. You can also pay 2 generic and a black and sacrifice a vampire or zombie to put 2 plus and plus 1 counters on Kalitas. 
Transforming any creature of your opponent who dies into a zombie on your side of the battlefield is amazing value, and it doesn't hurt that all of your opponent's creatures also get exiled, helping you to disrupt graveyard shenanigans. Then he can eat zombie friends to get even bigger, something that becomes increasingly problematic because of lifelink, since before your opponent even knows what's going on, you can have a huge life total. Kalitas is the kind of creature who can be utterly dominant for control decks, since he makes blocking and all of your removal spells way better, giving you that zombie value anytime you do those things. He was heavily played in standard at first primarily in control decks, but later on he saw some play in zombie tribal decks. Since he gave you lots of zombies and could eat them, he's also found success in several other formats like Modern and Legacy, but Pioneer is really the non-standard format where he has really left his mark, and another format where it's a fixture in control decks. He's going to keep seeing tons of play in Pioneer. While he didn't get here entirely as a result of 60 card formats, it is pretty close. He isn't the most popular commander, appearing in only 200 decks on EDA Trek. And at number one, it is Shieldred the Apocalypse. She's the newest card on the list, but already has a commanding lead in first place. At this point, I think it's safe to say that she is a real contender for the title of Best Black Creature Ever, and she's going to just keep on gaining points. This 4-mana four 4-5 four, has Death Touch, gains you 2 life when you draw a card, and makes your opponent lose 2 life when they draw a card. So, she has very good above-rate stats and rewards you and punishes your opponent for just doing something that's part of every single turn. She gets even better when your opponent or you draws extra cards. Her abilities create a massive chasm between your life total and your opponent's, allowing her to single-handedly win games. Upon being printed, Shieldred immediately made an impact in all of Magic's 60-card constructed formats. She is also heavily played in Commander, with only Kirik, Maronar, and Turgrid showing up as the Commander more in Mono Black decks. In short, right now, if you're playing any Magic format at all, you're playing with or against Shieldred, and she's been making a big impact. She is definitely in the running for the title of Best Black Creature Ever, and she's just going to keep on seeing play everywhere, so it's hard to imagine she ever loses her spot atop this list. Those are the top 10 black legendary creatures. If you're interested in owning any of these powerful cards, which play great in 60 card formats and commander, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in this video. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on past videos, including more that look at legendary creatures, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.